Let's get right to the latest on Hurricane Irma. John joins us now with some more information on that latest track. Yeah, we're all over this one. We are double teaming it in the uh, Weather Center and um, keeping a very close watch. Of course, as you may well know, the track changed a little more to the west uh, last night. And with that westward shift comes an increased risk for us for some worse weather. Stronger storms, uh, stronger possibilities of tornadoes, and of course, some, some uh, stronger sustained winds and gusty winds. Wow. Especially as we head into that kind of main period when the uh, storm will affect us most greatly, and that will probably be on Sunday into Monday right now. That, that time frame part has remained unchanged. Um, we have some changes in watches and warnings. We have some uh, updates on the current status of the storm. We're going to toss to uh, my friend Steve Newman for that, and he's going to go over those details <laughs> for you, and I'll give you the forecast and show you the updated track. John, we do have hurricane warning in effect through all of our viewing area. If you go outside now, the weather is not that bad. You look up, the moon is up there. We also have the stars out, the sun's starting to come up. So this is the calm before the storm. Taking a look at our current watches and warnings. We have a hurricane warning in effect across most of Florida. And uh, that is in effect and really until Tuesday afternoon, extends down to the Bahamas. And the latest uh, satellite and radar shows the storm skirting the coast of Cuba. And John, you want to take it and do this forecast? All right, thanks very much. We're looking at, uh, again, these are the updated forecast tracks here. Um, this is as of 5 a.m., and what I want to show you here is that the wind speeds have decreased just a little bit. Uh, we'll continue to watch this storm lift northward. Around uh, Sunday, it'll probably move to the northwest for about another 12 to 24 hours, after which by Sunday morning, we'll start to watch a more northerly turn. And that's going to be kind of a critical time, exactly when it makes that northerly turn. Uh, when it makes the northerly turn, we'll have a better idea whether it's further to the west or, or we'll, we'll really be able to zoom in on exactly the, uh, the, the path. But models are converging on a solution that takes it closer to the west coast, certainly. Uh, the east coast now, in fact, completely out of the cone of uncertainty. So as it takes this track, it has a slight window of opportunity to intensify maybe up to 150 mile an hour winds as a category four storm and then moving into our area and it looks like it's going to be a nighttime storm and it looks like this is going to be the storm we never wanted to see this storm will likely start to increase our wind speeds as we head into saturday afternoon sunday afternoon to tropical storm force or sorry this will increase our wind speeds to tropical storm force during the middle of the night saturday night into sunday and then by sunday afternoon we are very likely to see hurricane force winds here. And they could be strong hurricane force winds. We can see 100 to 110 sustained with gusts up to perhaps 140. We may even see 120 mile an hour sustained winds. And that's over a large part of the sun coast. So it's going to be a rough couple of days, no doubt about it. Today is the last good day for any kind of last minute preparations that you may have. and any last details that you need to take care of before you start to see the winds pick up and you need to be in a safe place and hunker down. Uh, if you are along the coastline, I will tell you that the storm surge potential is now coming in at about three to five feet, but that could certainly increase. We are watching across our region right now some chances of scattered showers. And our day planner showing, of course, not a bad day today, but increasing chances of rain as we head into the next 24. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So our satellite presentation of Irma is still pretty impressive. I mean, a solid eyewall core moving along the coastline, northern coastline of Cuba. However, it is not as symmetric as it once was. We do have to see some drier air kind of entraining itself in, possibly because of land masses, possibly because of some shearing interaction with some uh, uh, trough aloft. In any event, it has not made that northward turn yet and probably won't till it gets to about right here, just directly south of the tip of the state. At that point, it will slow down and basically stall for a brief period of time. When we see the forward motion of this storm slowing down and stalling out, that's when we're getting a signal that it's about to make that northerly turn. 
and that'll be an important time for us. We'll be watching that carefully. Wind speeds right now are coming in at about 10 to 15. Not that bad yet, but we'll be watching these wind speeds rapidly increase as we head into the overnight tonight. Irma's forecast track with 155 mile an hour winds coming off the, uh, coming off the coast of Cuba by Later, uh, later today into tomorrow, Sunday at about 2 a.m., it starts lifting northward through the Florida Straits, moving through the Florida Keys. It looks like a Category 4 direct hit on the Florida Keys. And now in deference to uh, the computer models kind of narrowing in, the track having shifted a little bit further west is kind of identical to the... Uh, to the 11 p.m. last night track, which keeps it really right along our uh, inland areas. So that by, uh, I'd say probably by Monday morning, early, early Monday morning, basically middle of the night, we'll be looking at a Sunday night into Monday morning, middle of the night time frame. We'll be looking at our winds rapidly increasing to high tropical storm force with some gusts to hurricane force. And then as the eye kind of moves on past, we'll be getting our strongest winds. By the way, when it moves north of us, we're not out of the woods. At the point that it starts lifting north, our winds become more onshore, and that is a bigger storm surge risk for us. And the storm surge right now is running around three to five feet estimated, but I'll show you some storm surge match and maps in just a moment. We have across our region very warm temperatures in the Keys, so certainly that will help sustain. But the center of the storm is forecast to move into an area here that you see colored lime and there's some reds. This is a uh, wind shear map that shows you the shearing winds that could affect a hurricane. And as it moves further to the north, it will probably encounter some of those stronger shearing winds, which will damage a hurricane. So that is good news, but we'll probably still see a strong Category 2 or 3 storm very close to us as we head into the uh, nighttime hours, Sunday night into Monday morning. Possible storm surge. These have just been run from the National Hurricane Center, and it shows you all along our barrier islands. Areas colored in yellow here have a three-foot above ground level storm surge inundation. That's over part of the coastline. And then a lot of the coastline will see a greater than one foot inundation. This is for the northern part of the viewing area. Down through Siesta Key, a lot of inundation here with some areas that see above three feet. But really, the further south you get, the worse it gets. We start looking as we get down toward Rotunda and toward the mouth of Charlotte Harbor. Some spots where the yellows turn orange. At that point, you're looking at a six foot above ground level storm surge inundation with current forecast models based on the current forecast track. So obviously that's going to be a rough go. Plus along the mouths of the Peace River and the Mayaka River as they flow into areas of, uh, of um, Charlotte Harbor, you're going to get some very serious flooding there perhaps. So that's the way it stands right now with storm surge. We'll talk about the wind speeds. We'll talk about the potential for hurricane force winds coming up in just a few. Back to you. Now we're going to get another weather update from uh, ABC 7's Steve Newman, who is standing by, and uh, John Scalzi as well. Gentlemen. Uh, thanks. We've got a, a, a full day, really, to uh, all of today in the daylight hours to get ready for the storm. And right now, it looks like Irma is skirting the northern islands of Cuba, where it's inhibiting its development. And we do have a hurricane warning in effect through most of Florida right now, from about uh, Jacksonville, uh, from Daytona Beach southward, all the way to the Florida Keys. On radar, the center is just barely out of radar range. John, why don't you pick this up here? You can see that uh, the eye is just beginning to skirt the northern coast of uh, Cuba. Yeah, we are, looking at, uh, we are looking at the beginnings of showers beginning to move into the Florida Keys right now. The winds are not all that strong across, uh, ac across areas of uh, the Keys. They're coming in a tropical storm force right now, but we are being able to clearly see the eye of the storm uh, defined by our Key West and Miami radar. So this is going to be a very powerful tracking tool for us as we head into the remainder of this storm event. We'll get a very, very clear idea of when it starts to stall out and when it starts to lift north. Heavy inundating rains possible for parts of Miami-Dade. Our rainfall amounts will be increasing as well. We'll give you the complete forecast coming up in a few. So here's your latest track update as of 5 a.m. We're kind of waiting for an intermediate update that comes in 
literally in about 20 minutes that'll give us a, uh, an update on the wind speeds and uh, central pressures, which will be interesting to see whether interactions with Cuba or any upper level wind shearing that might be taking place have in any way impacted this storm and lessen lessened its strength. But the forecast track will not change until 11 o'clock and the forecast track right now carries it toward the west northwest for about another 12 to 24 hours before we start to see that northward turn. What we'll notice first is a slowing of the forward speed. When we see that slowing of the forward speed, we'll know that we're uh, onto the turn there. And that will be an important thing to know. So Sunday at about uh, 2 in the morning, we'll start to watch that tar start to turn, impacting the Florida Keys with most likely a direct Category 4 hurricane hit with a monster storm surge. There's no place safe in the Florida Keys right now. That uh, storm then lifts northward, probably coming in st still kind of early to tell. It could be really anywhere between Fort Myers and, well, you see the cone of uncertainty, how far uh, it could be. But if the forecast tracks all verify coming in somewhere around Fort Myers and then lifting northward, moving probably, if the forecast track verifies exactly through the interior sections of uh, Hardy, Wachula, maybe inland even further than that, Again, let me stress, this track will probably change over the next 24 hours. The tendency has been for it to move further to the west. A 50-mile difference in position of this storm down toward the Keys has a large impact on the implications of the forecast when it's lifted north to our latitude. So it's a kind of a still, a wait and watch to fine tune our forecast. But because of the expanse of the wind field, it's safe to say that we will experience a very strong blow around here. Monday at about 2 a.m., Monday morning, basically in the middle of the night, Saturday night into Sunday morning, we'll probably be experiencing some of our worst winds. So this is going to be a nighttime storm, which is one of the scariest things, I think. Uh, you'll start to hear those winds howling. And uh, I know in my house, even if the winds pick up to tropical storm force, the, the rafters start to howl just a little bit. You may indeed hear that sort of thing as this storm system lifts north. In fact, the winds may even scream if the wind, if the, uh, wind speeds are strong enough. Right now, we are looking at a wind speed that is definitely tropical storm force around here with gusts to hurricane force likely to be hurricane force, minimal hurricane force, and possibly as high as 120 miles per hour, making it a formidable Category 2, 3 storm. I don't think we'll see a Category 4, four storm unless this track shifts a little bit further to the west and it maintains its, uh, maintains its warm water supply over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the forecast for the wind speeds. Well, tropical storm force winds, we're at the top of the scale. You can expect tropical storm force winds and probably about a four five hour period at least of tropical storm force winds maybe as much as 10 to 24 hours of tropical storm force winds hurricane force winds on the present track our hurricane chance uh, our hurricane uh, wind speed chances have gone up significantly since last we spoke yesterday morning and now we're really right up there in the 80 to 90 percent percentile chance of seeing some hurricane force winds around. So there will be lots of power outages. There will be damage to mobile homes if it takes that track. There will be some structural damage to, to good homes. There might be some roof tiles loose. There will be lots of debris in the road. That sort of thing after this storm passes by. The other thing we'll be watching carefully is storm surge and rainfall. Rainfall amounts have now gone up and this could be a very big player in the days after the hurricane passes by. We could see, you know, if the track were just right, we could see as much as a 10 inch rainfall around here, maybe even more, maybe even a 15 inch rainfall. Not out of the question at this point. So we have to plan for that. And that, of course, would lead to some very serious low lying flooding around here. Also, we'll be monitoring the potential for severe weather as well. So, again, let's just briefly go over the time frame. For today, not a bad day. Rain chance has actually gone down just a little bit. Look for a daytime high that's warm and muggy. Then, overnight tonight, you'll start to see the tropical storm force winds begin to arrive. When you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll see a noticeable increase in wind speeds. Those wind speeds will be slowly increasing throughout the day. And then overnight, Sunday into Monday, you'll notice a rapid increase in wind speeds as that storm begins to approach. And then by 
later Monday, Monday afternoon, Monday evening, that will be out of here and we'll start to expect the dance, inspect the damage.